Well, well, well. We back again. We're going to go 100% freestyle. I'm just going to turn to a page. Right here. It says in Psalms 106, verse 41. And he gave them unto the hand of the heathen. And they that hated them ruled over them. Ain't that the truth? The Almighty then gave me that scripture today. Go Psalms 106 41. You know, so like places like this, things like that you have to be reminded of. And I'm gonna remind the people of that. But we we turn the page to the New Testament, trying to find lies in the New Testament. And it's easy to do that. You just chant, start turning the page and they pop up. Of course, right here it says to hate your family, but I already know about it. People already know about it being in Luke chapter 14 and also in Luke chapter 12 where it tells you to hate your family. And he came to be against their family. Even though you check out the book of Malachi. Chapter 4. Verse 5, it said, Behold, I will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Yah. He shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. So right here, we're going to be doing the opposite of what Christ said he's going to be doing. In the book of Luke. You know, like the one in Luke chapter 10. Or if I can go there real quick and read how it says. Luke 12 and 51. Suppose that ye that come to bring peace on the earth. I tell you, I'm not come to bring peace, but division. Nay. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided. Three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son. That's the opposite of what in Malachi. But we see how there's many lies in this book. I mean, as you turn the page, you can see how it's a lie right here. And it says... This is what Christ is saying in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 12. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, He that believeth on me, and the works that I do, shall he do also. So, and the greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. The Father may be glorified in the Son. If he ask, shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me and keep my commandments, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Wow. Right here is telling you he'll do anything. What kind of lies is this? Then pray to Christ that they stop being racist. Pray to Christ that we get out of captivity. That is a lie. But we can see right next to it in John 14 verse 28 that you have heard that I have said unto you I go away and come again unto you if you love me you will rejoice because I said I go to the father Christ said for my father is greater than I so JC said it's greater but we all knew that right here in Luke 24 and 7 this is when you say he says saying Son of man, you must be delivered to the hands of sinful man and be crucified and the third day rise again. So, right here we're seeing the third day to rise again. You know, I'm looking at all these scriptures and we see in the New Testament being lies. The New Testament is written by our enemies, the Greeks. The Greeks is the enemies. That's why I don't understand how people want to call themselves Greeks. The book, the New Testament was written in Greek, which they the enemy. You got a Gentile that wrote the book of Luke and the book of Acts. We read the book of Acts. What does it say? The book of Acts, chapter 21. And it says, very important, funny. And it says, verse 21, And they are informed of thee, thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moshe, saying, They ought not be circumcised, and the children neither walk after the custom. It's therefore the multitude must needs come together, and they will hear thou hast come. Do therefore this that we say unto thee, We have four men which have a vow on them. Take and purify yourself with them, and be at charges with them. They may shave their heads, and all may know 
and those things where ye were informed concerning me are nothing but thou keepest and walkest orderly and keepeth the law so right here they made him do a vow of a Nazarite so the vow of a Nazarite is something of the law where you have to do sacrifices Paul was doing sacrifices even after JC died so this whole concept of JC is supposed to be some big sacrifice after Christ died we can also check in the book of Ezekiel Ezekiel chapter 44 Ezekiel 44 You read in verse 27 it says in the day that he go up into the sanctuary into the inner court to minister in the sanctuary he shall offer his sin offering saith Yah Elohim so right here this in the future temple you're going to be offering sin offerings so JC's offering is going to be what a, that was a sin offering of the past because we're going to throw that away we're going to throw JC away his his offering means nothing now is that what that means I, I think that's what that means but Reading the Almighty's word, you read how, who the true Messiah is. But you call him Messiah, the anointed one. It's a lot of the anointed ones. That's why when people say Messiah, you know they're ignorant. But just for clear, you know, just for everybody to understand why I'm coming, the Messiah. Then we would say, Jeremiah 30. Verse 9, it says, But they shall serve Yah the Elohim and David their king. Who I'm going to rise up. You know what's funny about that? Alright. I'm going to go to 1 Kings 1. It's good. It better not be 1 Kings 2. But it's probably 1 Kings 1. It's 1 Kings 1. 1 Kings chapter 1. Verse 4, and the Samson was very fair and cherished the king and ministered to him. But the king did not have sex with him. So King David had a little virgin with him when he was dying. They kept him warm at night, but never had sex with her. Wowzers. No, but that's that's beside the issue. Christianity is a, so much lies. I mean, you go to the book of Titus. It says in Titus 1 and 10. But there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. Especially the, they of the circumcision. So right there it's saying. People who are circumcised are vain talkers and stuff. Well, What does that mean? That means that the people are talking about these right now. It's uncircumcised. Or supports uncircumcision. I won't say. Because you know Paul may be circumcised. Saying it's garbage. But supports uncircumcision. And let me show you something about that also in Leviticus, I mean in uh, Ezekiel 44, about people who talk about circumcision in this manner. You go back to Ezekiel 44. In verse 9 it says, Thus saith Yah Elohim, no stranger uncircumcised in heart, nor circumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary. And any of the stranger that is among the children of Israel. So right here is letting you know. That the, the uncircumcised cannot enter into the sanctuary. Sorry. So for all the people who believe. In the lies. And I think the lies are located in 1 Corinthians 5. Yes it is. No it's 1 Corinthians 7. Verse 18 it says. Any man called to be circumcised. Let him not become uncircumcised. Any called an uncircumcision, let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing. But keeping of the commandment. So it says circumcision is nothing. But keeping the commandment. I mean, he said right here, the, the worst part is verse 18 where it says, Let him not be circumcised. He said if, if, if it is called an uncircumcision, let him not be circumcised. That's basically saying, let him not enter into the Almighty's temple. But that's what Christianity teaches. That's what the New Testament teaches. You know, uh, of course, J.C. teaches lies just like Paul teaches lies. I'm glad Paul is not a false deity so that I can say his name. 
because Paul is a, is a garbage individual. But I'm not going to make this too long, so let me get off the mic.